Well, holy smokers, your cowboy just lost his horse and lost his wagon. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm getting destroyed after hours right now. And um, I wanna go ahead and talk about this a bit. I wanna talk about like what happened. I wanna talk about what I could have done to prevent this, if there's anything, my thought process. Oh my goodness, guys. Uh, needless to say, it's not going so good for us in, in the last 30 minutes or so, okay? Elf stock, one of our biggest investments is down nearly 13% after hours, down around a dollar and 58 cents a share after the earnings were just reported here. And so if we just run some numbers here, okay, this is my public account, okay, available for everybody in my private stock market membership group. This is a stock right now that we have 3,475 shares. Very big position, one of the biggest positions we have. Uh, $43,000 roughly is the current value as of the close here today. The shares were trading at about $12.37. The stock has been you know, performing amazing. We're up about $15,000 roughly. But if you go ahead and run the calculation on what the shares are trading at after hours, it's basically about a $5,400 difference between what the shares closed at after hours compared to 30 minutes later here after those earnings came out, guys. Um, so needless to say, that is rough, okay? That is a rough after hours action here um, with ELF. We're gonna go over the numbers in just a moment and I'll talk about what I was thinking about doing, what maybe I should have done if I did anything wrong and we'll you know talk about all those sorts of things. So first off here, so ELF, we were up, like I said, you know, close to $15,000. Um, you know, if the stock's as bad as it is after hours in, as far tomorrow, then we'll probably only be up $9,000 roughly or so on the stock. But you know, to be up $9,000 or so, you know, in a position we've only been in for a few months, you know, it's still good, but it's not as good. Let's put it that way. Okay. And in terms of that overall account, maybe we're going to go up to or down to maybe only up maybe $40,000 or 38,000 or something like that. Uh, a lot will depend on how the other stocks do tomorrow and how, you know, elf stock does in general. Okay. Let's just chat about their numbers for a minute. So our transition period results exceeded our expectations with net sales of 66 million, which is an increase of 3% after excluding the impact of ELF stores. These results were driven by Project Unicorn and increased marketing activations behind our new first to mass products, said the CEO. Okay, We are pleased with the initial progress of our growth initiatives by improvements in track channel performance. We recognize that it will take time to fully implement our strategic repositioning and therefore we remain cautious as we enter fiscal 2020. So neither say massive beat. The analysts were expecting somewhere around like $56 million in revenue uh, and, and the company did 66. So smash numbers, absolutely destroyed them. Guidance, they guided to pretty weak numbers, a little under what analysts were expecting. I think honestly they sandbagged in a massive, massive way. I'm kind of disappointed they sandbagged that bad, honestly. Um, I don't think they had to do that essentially. Uh, needless to say, I think numbers are going to be amazing this year. I think they're going to show growth, even though they close their stores, which is going to help their profitability in a big way because those stores were money losers. Okay. So now let's go ahead and talk about what I could have done. Okay. I could have went ahead and sold all those shares before the market closed here today. And I was actually chatting with a friend on the phone about an hour before the market closed. And I was just playing around. I was like, do you think I should sell my elf shares or, or, or is they're going to report after the bell? And he's like, you should sell your elf shares. And his reasoning behind that was the stock's up massively. 50 something percent since we bought it, okay? Um, we're up like $15,000 or whatever. We could have went ahead and, and the way he kind of put it was, you go ahead and sell out of your position, take your $15,000 profit and, and you know, and on top of all your other shares and whatnot, have that money on the sideline. If it goes up tomorrow, yeah, you missed the, the, the upward move, but if it goes down, you get to buy for cheaper. And, um, I mean, it crossed my mind, but it's not a move I could have really made in this situation, okay? It's not really something I would have done because just as easily as it went down 12 plus percent after hours, it could have gone up 12 plus percent after hours, and I was almost 100% certain they were gonna smash earnings. What did the company do? They absolutely smashed earnings. Unfortunately, they sandbagged guidance, which I was not expecting. I was expecting very strong guidance. They totally sandbagged it, and they, they mentioned, you know, they wanna be cautious going into this year, and it is what it is, but um, you know, it is what it is. We'll leave it at that, okay? Now, I was really contemplating, as far as me personally, I was very much seriously 
contemplating maybe buying some puts that are going to expire on May 17th, which a put option is essentially a bet that you you know you think a stock might go down. And it's not because I would have thought Elf stock would go down. It was more like just to like hedge my position. Obviously, I have a big you know position in Elf. That's a positive position, right? A long position. I could have maybe bought just a few thousand dollars, two, three, maybe four thousand dollars worth of puts just in case the stock went down, okay? And just in case they had bad earnings. And obviously, as of right now, it looks like I definitely should have done that. I was looking specifically at the 1250s. The $10, I was not gonna buy those because that's too far out of the money. And the 15s, I wasn't interested in those. So I was really looking at the 1250s. I would have had to pay roughly 90 cents or so, which if I bought those ELF puts, I could have, you know, basically had a break even of around $11.60. And assuming the stock tomorrow, assuming the stock tomorrow opens and kind of trades, you know, in the morning around, you know, basically uh, where, where it's at now after hours, basically I would have been able to sell out of those, those put options for at least a 2x plus profit, okay? Because uh, I would have still gotten a premium for that because there's still time on my side for that. And it was, it was something I seriously considered and I was like, maybe, maybe just $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. I, you know, I was like, maybe I do that. Maybe I just cover, you know, hedge a little bit. And obviously, you know, everything's perfect in hindsight, but obviously that's a move I should have made. You could have said, well, sell out of all your shares. Just, you should have just sold them all. That's a little tougher, you know, to say and whatnot. The reason I was thinking about buying the puts is the move has been insane for the stock. I mean, it was a seven or $8 stock just a few months ago and it moves up like crazy. It was trading at like $13 just a few days ago. And even today, you know, around 1237 is where it closed out. But here's the biggest reason why I personally couldn't have went ahead and sold like we talked about, the stock could have easily went up 12 plus percent after hours. And, and imagine I sell out and I just missed a five or six thousand dollar profit of a stock that I still think you know is, is has good value, you know, going in coming years. I think this company is going to be much bigger in future years than it is now. Okay, the stock might have just run too much. But the main thing is bad habits, guys. Bad habits. Here's the thing, okay. Let's say I start thinking about all this short-term stuff, okay. Let's say I, I decide, okay, yeah, let me go ahead and sell out of all those shares, or let me sell out of half those shares or something like that, okay? Where's, where do you stop with something like that? As, as someone that should be focused more long-term in nature, right? Let's say you start making short-term decisions, which, which if I sold those ELF shares here today, that would have 100% been a short, term decision, okay? That would have been 100% been a short-term decision. It would not have been a long-term investing decision, right? I feel like this company is undervalued from where it's going in future years, okay? It doesn't mean I'm gonna go buy shares. It means it's just I'm a, it's a hole for me right now, okay? So if I went ahead and sold those shares here today, it's a short-term move, okay? It's just a short-term move. It's me basically gambling that maybe the stock would go down here in the short term. That's a gamble move. That's a that's a, what I call a Vegas move at the end of the day. And when you start doing short-term in nature moves, sometimes it leads to more short-term short -term in nature moves and you start getting into bad habits as I spoke about. And as someone that should be focused long-term, if you start all of a sudden, like where do you stop? Well, what about the next company that reports earnings? Do I go ahead and sell out that one too? And then that one goes up a bunch, okay? And then do I all of a sudden start second guessing myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm making these bad decisions. Oh, well, maybe I should do this, do that. All of a sudden you start making all these short-term decisions when you're, you're you're supposed to be kind of focused on the long-term gain. And so if you're an investor, just like if you're running a business, I think your frame of mind should always be long-term even if, even if it costs you money in the short term, okay? In business, it's the same thing as investing. Sometimes you have to make some decisions that unfortunately, they lose you money in the short term. But it's better for your business or your investment accounts over the long term because you stay focused on what the grand prize is and not the short term money, right? You know, a lot of businesses were, were you know, have fallen over the years because they, they got too focused on short term money in short-term results, and therefore, they were around for a short time, right? And then the businesses, the Amazons of the world, or the Apples of the world, or these Googles, or whatever, right? They focus long-term, and they, they sometimes go into projects and spend, like, think about it, Apple. Before Apple comes out with any product, usually they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars 
or billions of dollars on product development, had an immense amount of employees focus on building a product that they don't even know if it will sell well. They don't know if they're gonna make a profit on it. It's, it's a risk out there to focus the business long term, right? Amazon, Jeff Bezos building out all those warehouses over time, right? Those were long term decisions. He could have made short term decisions based upon they weren't you know making any money at the time or something like that. But when you start making short term decisions, you, you start making more short term decisions and that leads you down a bad path to bad habits and you end up starting to you know not make any real money in this game. So that's my point. You kind of got to investing business. It's the same thing. You focus long term. You, you focus on you know what staying in good habits. It's going to lead you to a lot of prosperous results over time. You start focusing around. Let me try to trade this. Let me try to you know get out of this position at the perfect time. Let me try to get in at the perfect time. It's going to lead to more and more bad short term results in my personal opinion. Uh, just from what I've seen in it with investors and from what I've seen with successful people in business, successful investors, the ones who are able to focus more long term and stay in good long term decision habits versus the ones that are that are trying to you know time everything out and trying to focus on short term making money. I just I just as clear as day like who's really makes the real money and who doesn't make the real money at the end of the day guys. So that's my point around that. Yeah, I, I guess I look like a genius if I go ahead and make you know sell out of all my shares 30 minutes before the market closes and I make a video I'm like I sold out all my shares and, and look at I'm going to be able to buy back for so cheaper. Yeah, you look like a genius, um, but it's going to lead to more and more bad habits, which more than likely over time is going to cost you a heck of a lot more money than you really realize, guys. So that's my point on this, and uh, that's my opinion on it, guys. And you might have a different opinion. You might think short terms, you know, the smart move to make, and that's perfectly fine. Um, we'll see, you know, who does better over time. Let's put it that way: the people that focus long term or the people that focus short term, guys. So I hope you enjoy this. As always, let me know your opinion on Elf or anything we discussed in this video to here today. I know, like, Elf's kind of like an obscure stock, but I think it was an interesting subject to cover here today, guys. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. Yeah.